okay class in this lesson we're going to learn about something called point slope form so suppose you had a situation like this what if you wanted to graph the line that has a slope of three and goes through a little typo we can fix here and goes through the point five comma two so what if I'm giving you a point on the line rather than the y-intercept? What in the world are we going to do here? Well, that's where the point-slope form comes in. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it is, and then we'll start working with it. So here's the point-slope form right here. So you need to definitely copy this down. It's y minus y1 equals m times, we, that's what these parentheses mean, or you can say m parentheses x minus x1. This is the point slope form. So why do we call it point slope form? Well we can use this form when you are given a point that we're calling x1 y1. Okay that's the point. So you plug in the x1 here and you plug in the y1 here and if you have the slope of that line m we would just put it right here. And we will have the equation of a line in point slope form. So here's some steps for graphing a linear function if it's in point slope form. You have to identify and plot the given point on the line. So this is going to be this part here. Okay? The, you have the y1 and the x1. It's going to help you get the point on the line. And then you can use the slope to plot an additional point by using the rise of a run. That's kind of like what you did with slope intercept form. And then lastly, you can draw a line through the two points. And of course, you can keep on going to get more points if necessary. So let's take a look at an example of how we use point slope form. So it says, write an equation of a line with the given slope and the point then graph the equation so so here's we have a line that passes through this point negative four comma one and it has a slope of two over five so we want to uh, write the equation of line and graph it so let's go ahead and write the equation so remember it's in point slope form so let's just write down point slope form here so we know it's y minus y1 and you should be copying this down too because the more you write this down the better you remember it so don't just watch me do it times x minus x1 okay so there's point slope form so remember this right here this first one's your x so this is going to be x1 and this one right here is going to be your y1 okay so we can go ahead and start plugging in right we can say y minus 1 because that's your y1 equals and then I have m but remember m is going to be the slope so this right here is the slope that's going to be m okay so we can say 2 over 5 right here so that's your slope and then let's put parentheses and you're going to say x minus negative 4 now because this is a negative and I already have a negative here these two negatives are going to make a positive 4 okay so I gotta change the sign Okay, it's very important. If this is a negative, when I plug it into point slope form, it becomes a positive. Okay, so here's the point slope form right here. This is it. So how are we going to graph this? Well, first we need to plot this point, negative 4, comma 1. So let's find negative 4 on the x-axis. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 is going to be counting this way from 0. So that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So there's negative 4, and then, ne and then up 1. Okay, so this is going to be negative 4, comma 1. So I plot that point because this is 1 on the y-axis. This is negative 4 on the x. So the slope is 2 over 5, right? So you remember what you do? You, go, you do the rise over run. So I've got to go up 2, okay? So I can go up 2. So that's up 2 right here. And then over 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just putting little dashed lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be the next point. Okay, so I went over to the right five, and you can keep on going. I would recommend getting more points just so you can draw a pretty straight lines to so go up to one, two, and over five. One, two, three, four, five. Just make sure you don't mess up. Remember, I can backtrack the steps and go down to one, two, and over five. One, two, three, four, five in the other direction. All right. So now I have a lot of points. I can draw a pretty straight line, I believe. Let me see. Let's go ahead and see if I can draw a pretty straight line through all these. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty close. All right. Now, keep in mind, when you draw your line, you need to have arrows 
okay, that go on both sides just to let you know that it keeps on going forever and ever in both directions. So that's how you would graph the first one. Okay, this is what the graph would look like for the first one. This is the point slope form, this is the graph. So go ahead and try to be on your own. And remember, if you don't have graph paper, just ask me and I'll get you some graph paper. But go ahead and be on your own and then uh, start the video again. Fast forward to the end and see if you got the right point slope form and if you have the right graph. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this. So we know it passes through the point 3, 5 and it has uh, the slope of 2. So remember, the point slope form is going to be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we can use the point slope form to plug in. So, so what we have here, this is going to be your x1 and this one's going to be your y1. So we can go ahead and plug in. That's going to be y minus 5, okay, because the uh, y1 is 5, equals m, which is the slope. That's this. So this is going to be 2. And then we're going to do parentheses x minus 3. So this is the point slope form right here. That's all you do. So how would you graph this? Well, remember, you need to go ahead and plot this point, 3, 5. So that's going to be, start at 0. Let's go to the right 3. 1, 2, 3, and up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this right here is a point on the line. So we can go ahead and plot that. And the slope is 2. So that was that, what does that mean? That means to get the next point, I have to go up 2 and over 1. Right? Because remember... You can write this number as 2 over 1. So this is your rise. This is your run. So I went up 2 over 1. I can go up 2 over 1. Right here, I got another point. And go up 2 over 1. Now, if I can kind of go in off my graph. So let's go the opposite direction. Go down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Bam. Down 2 over 1. So I think I have enough points. <laughs> and you don't have to draw as many as I have. I'm just drawing a lot just kind of see I can see to clearly see how the line's going to go. So now I can take um, my pencil or this little uh, line drawing tool on my uh, computer and I can just draw a line kind of through all those points just like that. So something like this would be good. Just make sure you put the arrows on the end. That just lets me know it's a line that keeps on going forever and ever in both directions. All right. So that's how you do this one. Um, let's go ahead and move on to another example. Take a look at this. We want to write the equation of a line in point slope form given two points. So here I'm given the point. I know the line goes through 4, comma, negative 3 and 5, comma, negative 1. So some of you might be saying, well, Mr. McCrow, how are we going to do this? We don't even have a slope. But remember, I have two points here. So if I have two points, I can find the slope by using the slope form. Oop, I don't need to see that. So we got uh, m. Remember, the slope form is m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So we can just plug into the slope form. So we can call this one x1, we can call this one y1. We can call this one x2, and we can call this one y2. So now we can just plug right into the formula. So y2, that's going to be this negative 1 minus a negative 3. Now keep in mind, if this is a negative 3, I have a negative and a negative, two negatives here. Okay, this first minus came from the formula, and the second negative came from the negative 3. So be careful with the negatives. All over x2, which is 5, okay, minus 4. So be careful when you type this in your calculator. Negative 1 minus a negative 3, that's actually a positive 2. Okay, so just be careful with those negatives. And then 5 minus 4 is just 1. So this slope is just 2. All right, so we found the slope. We know m equals 2. So now I can use point slope form. Okay, so... Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use for the point when you plug in. Either one of these would be okay. But I'm just going to use this first one since I already have it labeled x1, y1. So remember the point slope form. Let me write it down again just so that you can, you can't see this enough. Okay. And you can't write it down enough. All right. So you always write it down. It's going to get you used to seeing it and remembering what it is. So that's going to be y minus the y1, which is a negative 3. But that's going to make that a positive 3 because remember, it changes the sign equals m which is 2 okay we have m equals 2 so plug in 2 and then x minus x1 which is 4 and that's it there's the point slope form of this line 
So that wasn't too bad. So all you have to do is just, if you're given two points, you can write the equation of a line. You just need to make sure you find the slope using the slope formula. Okay. So go ahead and try that uh, with B and see what you get. Go ahead and try that with B. Pause the video and try it on your own. All right. So remember, we got to find the slope first. So I'm going to call this one x1. Let's call this one y1. This one's going to be x2. And this one's going to be y2. So I can just plug right into the formula. So here it is over here with this last problem. That means I'm going to do 6 minus y1, which is 0, divided by negative 2 um, minus 2. So what does that give us? Well, 6 minus 0 is just 6. And negative 2 minus 2 is just negative 4. So this equals um, negative 3 over 2. So there's the slope, negative 3 over 2. Now, there's the point slope form over there. Uh, remember, write it down, copy it down. I already have it written down, but just make sure you keep writing it. Um, so let's go ahead and plug in. So we got y, let's use this for our uh, y1, so that's y minus 0 equals three over negative 3 over 2. That's negative, negative 3 over 2. And then times, we have x minus x1. So that's x minus my x1 is 2. Okay. Now you could leave it like this, but if you ever see a chance to simplify, simplify. And look at this part here. Y minus 0 is just y, right? Because anything minus 0 is just itself. So this can actually, we can just write this as y minus negative 3 over 2 times x minus 2. See how we did that? Okay, so and some of you might be saying, well, this doesn't look like point slope form, but it is point slope form. It's just, it has a zero, okay? It has a zero um, for this y1, okay? So that would be the answer for this one. Now, if you left it like this, okay, that's, you know, it's okay. But on the test, you're probably going to see it like this. So you need to make sure you recognize this form. All right, we only got a few more problems left, and then we'll be done. Um, take a look at this one. Let, let's work on graphing point slope form. We already did some problems with graphing, but let's try another one. So it says graph this equation of a line in point slope form. So we have y minus 3 equals 4 times x plus 1. So remember, there's two things that we need. We need to find the point. I'm just going to call that P. And we need to find the slope, M. So how do we find the point? Well, this is going to be your x, okay? And this is going to be our y. But you have to be careful. Remember, the formula changes the signs of your x and y. So if this is a positive 1, that means it's a negative 1 in the point. And if this is a negative 3, that means it's a positive 3 in the point. So be careful there. Be careful with your sign. And then your m is just this one right here at 4. All right, so now we got the point. We got the slope. So we can do negative 1 for x and up 3, 1, 2, 3. So here's the first point we start at. And the slope is 4. So what does that mean? Well, we can write this as 4 over 1. So that means we go up 4 to the right 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. There's the next point. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. There's the next point. And I'm running out of room this way. So let's go back the other way. Down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left 1. Okay. Down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Whoops. I think I, I, think I kind of lost count. Let me start again. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. And over 1. All right. So that looks like it's lined up pretty good. So let's go ahead and draw the line. Um, so it's going to look something like this. Yeah, this is going to be the equation of this line. I'm just going to draw some arrows over here just to indicate that we keep going on and on in both directions. Okay, try to graph B on your own and then start the video and fast forward to the graph and see if you got it right. Okay, so remember there's two things. We need a point and a slope. So remember we can get the point. Uh, this right here is a negative 5, so that means it's going to be a positive 5 here in the point. Just make sure you change the sign. This is a positive 1, so that means it's going to be a negative 1 here. And then our slope is just negative 1 half. Okay, so this is negative... Um, uh, this is po uh, we've got to start with the x, so this is positive 5, negative 1, so that means we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 1. So here's the point that we start at. So then the slope is negative 1 over 2. That means we go down 1 and over 2 because it's negative. So down 1 over 2. There's the next point. Down 1 over 2. There's the next point. Down 1 over 2. There's the next point. So off the ground. Let's go the other way. Up 1 to the left 2. Up 1 to the left 2. Okay. Up 1 to the left 2. That should be good. So we can go ahead and draw the line. 
by just connecting all the points. Um, so the line is going to look something like that. Okay. So I got arrows on the end. This is how we draw the graph of a line that's in point slope form. And um, that's the last example I have. Okay. So right now you can go ahead and do some practice problems on Study Island. Uh, just be sure you ask me some questions if you get stuck.